Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's uh, pray and then we will study some more about the subject of faith. So we'll pray together. Uh, Abba Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your uh, grace on our lives. Thank you that we were able to gather, that, uh, Lord, uh, we are able to spend time in your word. Father, as we learn about faith, we pray, Lord, let faith uh, grow in our hearts. Establish us, Lord, in faith that we may be more than conquerors, Father God, as we face uh, the various situations in our lives. We thank you that, uh, Lord, your faith helps us overcome. We bless and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we talked about faith and some of the related aspects to faith. Can anyone recall what are the connected topics to faith? Faith is important, but what makes our faith effective? There are a few more aspects. So could you just recall and uh, share? The last two classes, we looked at it. Yes? Hope. OK. What is hope? Expectation. expectation. Hope is a joyful expectation. Hope, and then what else is related? Love. OK. Um, so what kind of love? God kind of love or agape love. Fine. So these are the related aspects. So what are some things that will hinder our faith or make it ineffective? These will help the faith. What are some things that will reduce our faith or deplete our faith? Doubt. Doubting. Yes, doubting. Then? And OK, discouragement. And what belief. else? Unbelief, worry. We looked at all these things, right? So when these other, uh, we are giving place to worry, fear, um, doubt, then it removes from the faith that we have. And our faith becomes ineffective. So one should not give place for these other things. So now, today, let's move on. Let's look at faith in the life of a believer. So we're going to call it believers walk of faith. Sometimes we end up with this mentality where we think that faith is only regarding spiritual matters and that faith is only from time to time or let's say Sundays. We are full of faith. But as the week goes by, we don't really work on our faith and we may not even think that faith is essential because we connect it only to Sunday, going to church, uh, you know, doing the so-called spiritual activities. But faith is more than that. Faith is for every aspect of our lives. So literally, it is a walk of faith, journey of faith. Everything in our lives needs faith. Uh, you remember one scripture that we learned? It says that just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith. And uh, there's another scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, which says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So all aspects of a believer's life require faith. And that's why we have to learn to walk in faith. Not one step, but the entire journey. So let's see how faith is applicable in the life of a believer. The number one time or moment when we need faith to come into Christ is the moment of salvation. But even for that, faith is required. Without faith, we can't be saved because we have to put our faith in what Jesus has done. Now, we can hear about Jesus, we can hear the gospel, but if we don't believe it, then will it be useful or will it work for us? It won't. There are so many people in the world. Jesus died for everyone. But who is saved? The ones who believe, those who believe him, those who receive him, to them he gave the power to be the children of God. So we receive salvation by faith. So there is need for faith 
even for us to be saved. Without faith, we cannot be saved. Let's look at this uh, scripture. It's a very important scripture. It's better that you memorize this scripture. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. So for today, we'll just read it together, but you can spend time to memorize it because it's a very foundational scripture for us as believers. So let's just read it together. Uh, for by grace, you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So let's concentrate on the first part there, just the first part. It says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. So there are two elements. What are those elements? Grace and faith. Okay. So this is how the Christian life is. First, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that we have eternal life. It's the grace of God that we have salvation. It's not by our works, but God gave it as a as grace. So we understand that. But how to receive it? How to walk in it? The second element, which is faith. So by grace, through faith. Salvation is by grace, through faith. So both of these elements are at play for us to experience salvation. If there is no grace, God's grace, we will never have salvation. If we don't apply faith, we will never have salvation. So both the elements are very necessary. So always remember this, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. This is how we got saved. We needed faith. Okay. So when we heard the gospel message, there was faith in our hearts. We accepted it. And now we are walking in salvation. So this is what everyone who is hearing the gospel message needs. If they just hear it and they don't apply faith, it will not work for them. Just think about this. The Bible or the scriptures, there are many people who read the scriptures, not just believers. They can be people of other faiths. They can be historians, you know, archaeologists, because they look at history. They read the scriptures. But what is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? Everybody is reading the scriptures. What is the difference? Yeah, they don't believe. You can read it. We can read it like a history book. We can read it like a story book. You know, we can read it in many ways just for interest, for knowledge. But the difference for a believer is this is life itself. Faith, we are using our faith. That's when whatever God has provided by grace becomes applicable. We receive of what Christ has done through the finished work of the cross. So it's not just a story for us. It's not just a historical incident. God gave us through grace, but here we are, we are applying our faith. So then it becomes useful or it works in our lives as believers. So salvation is also by faith. People are reading, but if they don't believe, they don't receive salvation. We are, they're hearing all the time, but they're don't, not believing. There is no salvation. Faith is required, right? It's also called saving faith. So one needs that initial amount of faith to receive the gospel or to put their faith in God. So this is how salvation works for us. Now, let's look at another really important passage. This is in Romans chapter 10. So we can all please turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. So it helps us understand the dynamics of faith. Romans 10, 9 and 10. I'll uh, quickly read it out for us. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So what are the two things that have been mentioned here? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart right then 
you will be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So this is how we receive salvation. With the heart we believe, with the mouth we confess and we are saved. Now in the same way, almost all other things in the Christian walk have a similar way you know of us receiving so there are many other things by with the heart we believe when we hear the word of god with the heart we are believing with the mouth we are confessing we are accepting we are de declaring we are speaking our faith so then it manifests in our lives this is the walk of a believer salvation also starts like this salvation starts with faith because it says through in the heart one believes no, and then we make the confession. So everything else in the Christian walk is similar. Believe in the heart and then we speak our faith or we make our declaration. So let's remember uh, this pattern. So initially, the interaction of grace and of faith. And secondly, believing with the heart and confessing with the mouth. So both these passages, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 are very foundational. So uh, one needs to know these scriptures. One needs to know what these scriptures are speaking to us. Okay, everyone's clear? Salvation is uh, through believing. So faith is needed. That's how our journey starts. Now let's look at uh, the other aspect in the Christian walk. Everything must be done in faith. Everything. So we already stated the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5, 7, which says that for we walk by faith and not by sight. In all things, we live not by the natural, but we live by the reality of the spiritual. Not by sight, but by faith. Okay. So we must do that. We walk by faith and not just by our sight. Then Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. The latter part says the just shall live by faith. So our journey is one of faith. We can probably look at somebody who's not a believer and Compare that person with a believer. For the believer, life is about living it out in faith. Now imagine both of these people, unbeliever, believer, are doing the same thing. For example, they are both students. So the unbeliever studies, the unbeliever has goals and uh, aspirations, but they don't have faith. They're doing it all with you know, whatever uh, the world has to offer, they're making their journey. But for the believer, when the believer is a student, they study by faith. They expect from God by faith. Their aspirations are based in faith. Their future is, uh, you know, on the basis of trusting God. So everything is based on faith. They are both students. Think about somebody who is working. Again, Everything that a person who's a professional or working, and if they're a believer, must be done by faith. Why do we do well at work? Why do we learn? Why do we um, excel? Faith. We trust that, okay, I work hard because God will bless the work of my hands. So that's how a believer must think. They're operating in faith at all times. How about, you know, apart from work and studies, how about like day-to-day, day-to-day life? Everything must be based in faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So when we say everything, you know, if we're, uh, let, let's say, take care of our health, we're exercising, we're eating, we're doing it by faith. We're saying, okay, God, as I'm making this effort, I know you will bless, bless me, you will give me good health. Uh, so we're doing it by faith. We are, you know, maybe just think about anything. You 
probably drive, you're going someplace by faith. They're like, okay, God will bless this appointment. He will bless this meeting. Um, I will be a blessing to the people whom I meet. Or uh, let's imagine, you know, we are going and even to church. And then we are so worried about parking. We say, oh, I'll get a parking spot by faith. Why not? Everything is by faith, right? We're using internet. Sometimes you're like, oh, will it work? Will it not work? How about we have faith? We pray, say, Lord God, you bless even the connection. Let it work, God. By faith. You operate by faith at all times. We are cooking. Cook by faith, right? It'll turn out good. It'll be helpful. So why not? Everything should be done by faith. It should be done by faith. That is the real journey of a believer. We walk by faith in all matters. The just shall live by faith. We make small decisions or we make big decisions. We make big decisions about business, about uh, buying a home, making all these you know, big purchases. Everything should be done by faith. Or how about ministry? You know, We are ministering in any capacity that God has called us, maybe in the area of music or in the area of counseling, in the area of media. Uh, but Morning. we can trust that God will bless Morning. the work of our hands. Okay, so let me um, just one second. Morning. Uh, Kitibwe, do you have a question? I can hear you. Okay, I don't think so. Seems like it's unmuted. Okay, fine. So all things, all decisions that we make, we started our Bible, you know, Bible college by faith. Yes, I will learn something. Um, I will grow. I will be a blessing. What is all this? Faith. We are doing it by faith. Then, you know, that that's when it is the right way of living our lives. All things can be done by faith and should be done by faith. Now, what if we do not, do not have faith? Okay, there's a, a scripture, Romans 14 verse 23. Could someone read it aloud? It's there in our notes and I'll, I'll come back to the online students. Seem like, seems like someone has a question. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith nor whatever is not from faith is sin. See that last part? It says, for whatever is not from faith is sin. So direct. So direct. God hasn't given any space for confusion there. If we are doing anything which is not of faith, but with doubt, it is sin so imagine all the things that we listed out now you know studies work ministry uh, daily activities if we do it one is to do it with faith one is to do it with doubt and confusion if i do it with doubt and unbelief in my heart what the scripture means is it does not have god's approval so God is not pleased with it. You remember earlier we studied from Hebrews 11 verse 6. Faith pleases God. Doubt and unbelief, God is not happy. There is no approval. We can do the same activities. We can have the same pursuits minus faith. Now if there is no faith, then it's sin. That's what the Bible says. So it's a serious thing actually. So to be able to do all things with faith, uh, you know, that's the place that we need to grow into. All right. So let me uh, quickly come to the question here. Uh, yes, um, Brother Venkateshan, you have a question. I can see your hand raised. Uh, yes. Presently, I have no question, madam. Oh, you don't have any question. OK, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, can I? Uh, can you uh, mute then so that we do not have? Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Okay, so all things must be done by faith. Without faith, 
it is a sin. Okay. Now we'll move on. If anyone has questions, you can always stop and ask in between. Next one, third point here. Faith is key to receiving from God. So in James chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, James writes about receiving wisdom from God. So he says, if you know one lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. There is a condition that follows in verse 6. He says, but let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Okay, let's go back to verse 5. It says, if someone is in need, in this case, need of wisdom. So I want to get wisdom. Where, where can I get wisdom from? The source. God is the source of all wisdom. So I go to God and I ask for wisdom. Now, how does God give? It says, liberally. Meaning, when God gives of what he has and what he has um, already given us through the covenant. You know, there are many blessings, not just wisdom. We can ask him for um, healing. We can ask him for direction. We can ask him for success. We can ask him for many things. Through the covenant that we have, the new covenant, God has blessed us with many, many promises. So we go to God because he's the source. And what do we do when we are lacking something? We ask. We ask. How does God give? Liberally, which means that he gives a lot. He gives generously. He pours out, whether it is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, um, or, you know, he's also called as the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So we can say, God, pour upon me the spirit of the fear of God so that I can walk, uh, 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 you know, in an honorable way and my life can glorify you. Whenever we ask God, God gives generously. He gives liberally. That's the kind of giver that God is. Even when he gave Jesus, he did not hold back his best. His best is Jesus. He gave. So God gives. Why does God give? Because he loves. Remember, we talked about love in the last class. So because God loves, he gives liberally, generously. And it also says without reproach. Without reproach means without scolding. Okay. So if, uh, you know, we, we um, recall like uh, at home, you go and ask your, uh, let's say your parent, right? Or your mother. Maybe there are some cookies or nice biscuits. Okay, you go and ask first time. First time, mom only comes and gives us. Okay, two two cookies. You can have it. So it's done. You go back again. Say one more. I want one more. Maybe she'll say, okay, fine. You take one more. When you go the the second time and the third time, what will you get? You'll get cookie also. You'll get one nice scolding also, right? Because like, what is this? I already gave you. You're coming back again and again. How many times do you want to have? So. There is a sense of like, you know, like scolding where they'll give, but with one nice whack. You'll get a whack also and you'll get the cookie also. So sometimes you're scared, like, should I go? Should I not go? You know, you're not able to take it. But when it comes to God and the covenant blessings that God has for us, this scripture says, liberally, and without reproach, meaning if we ask for more, one more plate, Lord, one more plate of wisdom, God will not say, I already gave you. Why are you asking again and again? He doesn't do that. He'll say, yeah, take, take more. He's generous and he does not withhold. He will pour it out. I can ask 100 times and God will say, sure, please have more. You want more wisdom? I'll give you more wisdom. He doesn't scold. Okay, so it shows us about the kind of giver that God is. So when one goes to God to receive something from God, we need to have the faith that God will give me. 
um, uh, it will it will be you know poured out into my life and it will help me serve well do well so on and so forth so there needs to be faith i'm asking god and god will give it to me so that's what in verse 6 he says you ask you'll get but ask with faith knowing that god will give but imagine we're asking god give me wisdom i don't have wisdom i know you won't give you know so in the back of our minds doubt unbelief oh, why will he give me he'll give somebody else not me all this is what unbelief doubt he says if anyone is asking with doubt let him you know this kind of a person he says verse 7 let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the lord so when there is unbelief we can't receive from god so what are we talking about right now do we want to receive from the lord of all his blessings we need faith without faith we cannot receive anything from god james is saying a man who is doubting forget it he will not receive anything from the lord but the one who has faith will receive so we want to receive from god and we need to have faith that you know god is a good god that god is a god who blesses his children he provides he protects he preserves right so faith in who god is faith in the blessings that he has already released to us then when we go and we ask with faith we receive so we need faith to receive from god so that's the third part there uh, where it talks about a believer's life of continuously receiving see we have to receive right every day we have to receive from the lord uh, and that's our journey of faith in all situations we want to receive and keep moving forward but that will take faith okay great so let's move on we'll go to the fourth point here this talks about um faith which helps us gain victory so with faith we can be victorious could someone read the scripture 1 john 5 and verse 4 or oh, whoever is whoever whatever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith amen so it says one is faith causes us to receive that we've already settled now faith causes us to be victorious faith causes us to be victorious okay imagine an assignment which is given to us we can doubt if we'll be able to do it or not but we can also take a step of faith have you heard that people say take a step of faith take a leap of faith meaning we believe that okay god will help me in this assignment and we take it up so when we take it up by faith we rest in god and that gives us the victory so once we are done with it we come back and we are like wow i can't believe i was able to do that okay i i was able to complete it i was able to um finish it i was able to excel in this but how was it possible the person acted in faith now if there is no faith what are some possibilities maybe they'll say no i can't do it you know don't ask me now come back later or they may do it but with a lot of doubt and confusion right and they lack confidence in doing it so many things can happen when one does not have faith but worse of all it will not have god's approval so that is the worst isn't it uh, they may finish it if may finish the task but ultimately it's not blessed by god it's not pleasing to god but when one does it by faith not only have they completed it but they come out more confident they like wow i can't believe uh, you know god could work through me like that it's amazing so they are victorious in that particular assignment so uh, i just want to encourage us in all matters of life 
faith will help us conquer. Faith makes us victorious. I'm sure if I start asking each person one by one, you know, are there any such, uh, any such assignments or uh, things in your life that you took up by faith? You'll be, you, you'll share hundreds of testimonies that only because of faith I tried it, I did it, God helped me, uh, you know, I chose to uh, do something particular, God blessed me. There'll be many stories of victories among all of us because it is faith that makes us victorious, right? It is faith that helps us to conquer in our situation, day-to-day situation so uh, there is one um one um, reminder for me so uh, john and charles wesley you must have heard their names these are the founders of the methodist movement uh, and uh, they were they were also they were also the leaders in the holiness movement in in church history now these brothers they had many siblings so their mom is susanna wesley and uh, when you read about the life of susanna wesley you know we are talking about taking up assignments right or doing something accomplishing something but her she believed that her main purpose in life was to raise up godly kids and uh, to you know to do what god called her to do so there are stories about her life, uh, how she was so faithful to God as a mother, taking care of the children. And uh, apparently, there were times when she did not have the energy or the space to pray. You, know, you can imagine so many kids running around here, there. Where is the quiet time? There is no quiet time. So what she would do is she would just take um, like a whale or a bed sheet, put it on herself. And that's her space. That's her quietness. Because outside that veil are the kids running around and being noisy. So she would create that space for herself and she would pray. She was a mother of prayer. And, you know, she was a mother of uh, dedication. And no wonder, you know, her sons are talked about even today. Amazing men of God who have shaped uh, history, so to speak. But you see, it's not about accomplishing big things. It's about doing what God called us to do. So when you read about the life of Susanna Wesley, she was a wonderful mother to her children. And that made all the difference. Do you think it takes faith to be a good mom? Yeah, it takes faith to do anything. It takes faith to be anyone that God calls us to be. So that's what we are talking about. It makes us victorious. How could she be victorious in her prayer life, in the midst of so much of tiredness and hard work and noise, confusion, faith, woman of faith. She was conquering every day because she was a woman of prayer every day. She wouldn't sacrifice her prayer for anything. Okay, Victorious in day-to-day -day life. How? Faith. That's what each of us needs. People of faith in all the things that God has called us to do. We walk by faith, we conquer by faith. Maybe initially when we are taking up something, we feel like, no, God, I don't think I can do this. But take a step of faith. Make a leap of faith. God will help. And look at the scripture. It says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. We overcome the world because we are born of God. What is the world? World over there comes from the, the term cosmos. Cosmos refers to the systems of the world. So, you know, the patterns which are in the world. And then again, all the evil that is there in, in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all these things are what represent the world in this context. And John is saying, so everything that the world puts on us, right, temptation, um, uh, any, any form of attraction, lies, <coughs> accusation, all the works 
which are in the world, you and I will overcome. How will we overcome? Victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So as long as you and I are walking by faith, we will overcome the world. But when we stop walking by faith, you get, you know, like walked over by the world. So let's walk by faith and that will help us be victorious. Okay. Um, we'll move on to the fifth point here, which says that faith is our shield against the enemy. So when we talk about spiritual warfare and spiritual armor, Ephesians chapter 6 has parts of a uh, believer's armor, spiritual armor, you know, sal uh, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, shoes of the gospel of peace, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So now we'll talk about shield of faith. Okay, Shield of faith. For every believer, for us to overcome the attacks of the devil, we need a shield of faith. So all of us need something to protect us. Shield protects us. What protects us? Faith. Shield of faith. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Could someone please go to this uh, verse and read it? Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Oh, all right. Thank you. So you can imagine. Okay, imagine the uh, old time wars. How did they fight? They used to have uh, arrows, bows. Today there are other uh, armor, uh, other different armors and weapons that people use. But back in those days you had the arrows or darts. So he's saying fiery darts of the wicked one, meaning Satan's attacks. Satan's attacks. How does Satan uh, attack us? Discouragement, confusion, anxiety, fear, accusation, lies. So something comes, you know, someone once said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head but you can stop it from making a nest. Yes or no? Yeah, we can't stop. So many birds fly over our head. But if it's going to make a nest, we can stop it. So in the same way, Satan attacking us with a thought, an evil thought. We're not thinking about anything evil. We are just doing our daily. Suddenly one thought comes to us. You know, what if I fail? What if this happens? Or maybe a lustful thought. Something distracts you, distracts you. So. Satan is an expert at this. He'll shoot those arrows. He'll come. Where does it usually affect us? In our minds. He'll come. But we don't have, we can't stop those thoughts from coming sometimes, but we can stop them from being planted in our minds. So now, what is Paul writing about? He's writing about shield of faith. Shield of faith. So as a believer, every day I walk with a shield. Okay. What is that invisible shield? Faith. I'll overcome. Yeah, okay, Satan, do whatever you want to. I'll overcome. I'm walking with the shield. My faith is high. So when my faith level in God is high, Satan, he'll try. He'll keep shooting. He'll keep shooting. But what, what happens when you have a shield? Okay, you, all, you all know the picture, right, of a Roman soldier and a shield. He'll come hit and it may get destroyed. It may fall off or it may get redirected. But if there is no shield, then what happens? Yeah, we'll be injured. Right? Small injury, big injury, maybe even death itself, if it hits some part which is vital. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, believer, you want to protect yourself every day from the attacks of the devil? Use the shield of faith. The shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So if you and I are people of faith, we are walking with faith every day. Faith in God is strong every day. 
literally it's like there is a shield invisible shield and satan is trying 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 nothing is affecting us all the attacks are falling to the ground so that's how the walk of a believer must be we are able to overcome because we are walking in faith there's another passage that apostle peter writes about in first peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9 where he says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world okay so let's try to understand at least two simple thoughts from here first is satan is roaming around trying to find a target and a victim victim for what victim to destroy the faith you know that's satan's biggest goal for all of us not just for some you know great leader in 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 uh, the kingdom of god no every believer his main agenda is destroy faith if he destroys faith no shield you know no victory no overcoming it's gone it's done if he can destroy your faith and my faith he's already won the battle so that's what he's looking for so satan he's like this roaring lion who is searching okay whose faith shall i destroy but since he's this way peter says resist him stop him resist him how to resist him steadfast in the faith steadfast means being um firm being strong standing you know uh, unshakable in the faith so when i am standing in faith he can try to destroy my faith but it will not happen so this is what we must be aware of satan will try his best to destroy our faith but uh, as long as we strengthen our faith no matter what the enemy comes with any form of attack we will be able to overcome so this is how you and i can overcome with our faith okay so i think it's fairly uh, simple so i'll just go on i'll see if i can complete a few more points the next is we receive the promise of the spirit by faith um there's a scripture in that section could one of us please pick it up and read galatians 3:14 that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles in christ jesus yes. that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith amen so it says the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles in christ jesus so originally god's blessing through the abrahamic covenant was for the people the descendants of abraham however we who believe in christ so who are we we are the people who are in christ now so we are not we are not the descendants of abraham naturally but we are the descendants of abraham through faith so it is faith that makes us descendants of abraham in order to receive the blessings of abraham that's what he's saying the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles okay or another set of people in christ jesus that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith the promise of the spirit what is that the promise of the spirit is nothing but baptism in the holy spirit baptism in the holy spirit and this scripture says we receive the baptism in the holy spirit through what through faith even for us to experience baptism in the holy spirit we need faith in god we need faith in his word and there is an encouragement from luke chapter 11 where it talks about somebody asking for the holy spirit and it says look if a son ask for bread will the father give him a stone if he ask for fish will the father give him a serpent 
if he ask for an egg will he offer him a scorpion if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him so it says when we ask that jesus baptize me with the holy spirit we need to believe that he will baptize us with the holy spirit because how beautifully god is explaining again and again if you ask for holy spirit will i give you any other spirit don't be afraid don't be afraid you will receive the holy spirit you will receive the work of the holy spirit the flow of the holy spirit because who is a better father than god no one else he is the best right so when we ask him for the holy spirit he will pour out his holy spirit on us and that's how we receive the holy spirit through faith okay so let me just stop till this there are two more points which we can cover in the next class um but maybe we can review all of this and come back the next class if you have any questions we will address them and then complete the rest of it so this is about a believer's walk of faith okay uh, akili is saying hello pastor is there a timing on when one receives baptism in the holy spirit so answer is we don't have to wait for a timing it's now because only for the uh, disciples who were waiting uh, in acts 1 and 2 jesus told them to wait that was the only time that tarry before you go and you know preach was applicable but for us we don't really have to wait like you know 5 days 10 days nothing like that as soon as we pray we can expect the baptism in the holy spirit i hope that's okay akili let me know okay so let's uh, close then with a word of prayer uh, could one of us here in class lead in prayer so you know we can wrap up heavenly father thanks for this time to be uh, pray for you father father we have learned how to be faith in our life believer life father father how to improve ourselves in your father father uh, what we have been learned what we have been listen father father we should not leave anywhere we should need to applicable everything in our life father father we just need to show to lot of people how to behave in faith father how to be in faith father in the name of jesus i pray amen 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 and thank you thank you everyone god bless you